don't even know where to start. I will start by saying I'm also in a boat. This week, I'm catching up with you guys. Some boat shows, fun conversations, and the moment we've been waiting for. Monos versus cats. Somehow's <laughs> the worst part of the job. The job of a crew of eight by yourself. There's lots of work to do. Made a pit stop in Fort Lauderdale last night. Um, landed around three. Um, my time with family was amazing. I did not bring out the camera, obviously. And now it's 6.40 a.m. and we're leaving in 20 minutes to head to the Annapolis Boat Show. So, um, stay tuned and Nothing could have prepared me for the show. It was simply amazing. From all of you who stopped by to seeing old and new friends and touring quite a few boats, including a few of Benito's boats, the XS Catamarans, the First 53, and the Oceanus 51. Welcome you to the Annapolis Adaptive Boating Center. Two and three times as many guests with disabilities, recovering warriors, and children from underserved communities, which makes it. To the Chesapeake Bay Magazine for teaming up with uh, Cruiser's Creative Content and Jeff Bach. So we brought these amazing uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen up here from Sailing Nahoa. We've got Colin and Jamie from Parlay. We've got Lee Rose. And then, of course, we have to have a single handed sailor. So Lauren is holding the fort down. This is so exciting. I'm sorry, we lost our voice, all of us. I'm just speaking to everybody, <laughs> speaking for everybody. With Nick and Teresa. Monos versus cats. I vacillate between thinking this camera is just way too big, too hard, too much work. I want to go back to my simple 38 foot monohole. Yeah. And then five minutes later, I'm like, I will never leave this cat around ever again. I love it so much. You can answer that. They're both amazing. You will end up in the same anchorage, watching the same sunset, going to the same place, whatever boat you have. It doesn't really matter. Captaining your own boat is like, it's a lot different to being uh, first mate. You are responsible for everyone that's on the vessel. What's oh, the worst thing about being a captain? Because he, he had like a ton of crew. The worst yeah. thing about that is the crew, but the maintenance on the boat is worse. <laughs> How do you stay calm is what she's asking. How do you stay calm? That's one thing person? you have to do as being a captain, like in situations like that, when you do have crew, you always have to stay calm because- you... How is the family, does the family help you get through all that? You know, the stress, because for me, it's kind of like this weird combination of like, it's more stress, but it's also more calming. I think it's a wonderful way to raise your children. They get to see so much. The job of a crew of eight by yourself. Like where, when do you sleep? Do you, do you take naps? It's probably one of my most commonly asked questions. I don't think there's any right answer for a solo sailor. We all figure out what works for us, what doesn't work. I love boats. I love the ocean. I love sailing. And I take it every second as it comes. But to be honest, you don't sleep as a solo sailor at all. You Share one of your most, uh, not, not necessarily dangerous, but just scariest experiences being alone. You know, I have to say for being a single handler, single handling, every really bad situation I've been in, I've had people around. I have to say that goes towards the community. It goes towards some of my friends. One of my friends right here, Anna, she was there when my engine hydro locked week two of owning the boat. Brand new engine. And I still had 200 miles to go to Florida. I woke up at 5 a.m. and my engine was almost underwater. Yeah. If YouTube did not work out, did you have a second plan? I started chartering. So YouTube was a second option for me. Okay. I think uh, only fans has become a physical. <laughs> uh, backup plan? No, we're screwed friends who are in their 50s and 60s and 70s and they all invariably say two things we wish we'd done it earlier okay and secondly um we're not fit enough strong enough to do this at our age trying to raise a mainsail by hand on a 45 foot boat or haul up an anchor by hand because your windlass is buggered it's hard work so like you get to 55 yeah and it sucks ass voiceovers are a really really difficult part of of uh, making these videos because 
it doesn't happen at the time of, so you have to literally get yourself back in the moment to really be able to tell the story, and Ben's one of the best. I'm trying to tell the story of where we were and what was significant to us, and that's kind of where the voice words come in. Like, what were we, what were we feeling, and, and what was going on behind the scenes? And... Well, the significance of the thumbnails, and how you go about creating them, because uh, I'm desperate. This is my favorite question right here. This is such a good question. Thumbnails are the worst part of the job. I hate making thumbnails, but no one will care unless your thumbnail tells them how amazing this story is. But you know, you're sailing around the world and you can't come up with a thumbnail that is intriguing all the time, you know? Everyone knows that a bit of TNA works. If you don't have a YouTube channel, you might not know. There's a thing called YouTube Studio and you go in and it'll tell you how your video is doing compared to the last 10 that you posted. Today's thumbnail was a little bit of butt cheek in there. It's 10 out of 10. It's our worst <laughs> video. Well, I posted a video the other day and I was on a bikini laying on a beach and it's 10 out of 10. Your last 10 videos are ranked within YouTube. So you always know if you're failing at life or you're crushing <laughs> it at life. So Michael, 11 years old guys, you're right? Warren. For anyone who wants to like solo sale, like, what advice do you have for any solo sailors? Getting into any boating, water, any activity you can on the water, keep your passion going. I wouldn't be where I am today without just doing what I loved and meeting people and one thing led to the next and it will continue to go for you. And just getting there and meeting people makes all the difference in the world. Some of you guys have traveled to you know, the dangerous locations, the more exotic off-beat locations. I guess you're, you're taking a risk every time you step on your boat. You learn, you learn your own, what you can take, what you can hack, and what you, and if it's not right, for, it's not right for everybody. And if you don't feel comfortable going there, then, then by all means, you don't. But what... One of the biggest lessons I've learned is to listen to the people who have been there, not to the people who are about to go there. So Most likely, you're going to be able to do something. You're going to find a way to do something, even if it's not what everyone else is doing or what everyone else has done. Lauren, what's the hardest thing about uh, sailing solo? For sailing solo, I absolutely love sailing solo. When I get somewhere, I do love seeing people, and I love getting to dive with people. Day-to-day -day life, fixing things, which is what we do most of the time, and sometimes you need one extra hand or even an extra finger. I mean, <laughs> part of you, how important are patrons to you guys to help keep you out there, but also how, how important are they to keep you guys motivated to keep pushing and keeping out content for your patrons? I'll speak on the motivation part since I'm alone. My patrons give me kind of a sense of community out there. I definitely have my friends and family that I talk to. But it's really nice being able to have that one-on-one -on -one or the direct comments that give a platform that you're responding to. They are really motivating because they are behind you 100%. The emotional support is just as important, if not more so. And as Lauren was saying, the um, the motivation um, they they keep us motivated. They keep like they're watching it regardless of what the thumbnail is, what the yeah. title is. And I would say it's a confidence boost. It's so nice to put um, faces to the names that we're seeing. You get to like mingle with these people that are supporting you. But like they said, not just financially, but just they give you they give you that boost that you need to keep doing what you do. We wouldn't be here without patrons. You, I mean, we've been doing this for eight years. I feel that way. All right. Oh, oh Jesus. Yeah. Wait, Anna, oh, Sasha. Thank you. Woo! to start I will start by saying I'm sick and I'm also in a boat Annapolis boat show just ended Sunday and today's Tuesday so once I was in Annapolis I got asked to bring this boat from Cape May to 
um, a little north of Fort Lauderdale. It sucks to be running a boat when you're sick, but I'm happy I'm not with anyone and can't get anyone else sick. It should take three to four-ish days to get down there. Today's day two. So that's what's about to go on. And to rewind for the Annapolis Boat Show, it was an amazing time and it's so much fun to get to run into people again and also meet people that you follow on Instagram and YouTube and so it's kind of like this big reunion and it was so amazing we had so much fun and thank you all who came by I appreciate you guys so much it was so much fun getting to meet you having conversations with you my patrons thank you guys so much for coming to meet up and saying hi it was so amazing. I wouldn't be here without you guys and um, it means a lot to me that you came by and it's so surreal. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm out. Today's going to be a pretty long day and we'll see how it goes. It's so weird like navigating in intercoastals versus open ocean. Like what I do on the boat, sailboat is actually easier than this. We are back from Annapolis Boat Show. I'm still a little sick, but I have to show you guys something because I forgot to cancel Mako's Chewy subscription. I had it on every eight months, but I forgot. And he's trying to open the box. What's in there? The Fort Lauderdale Boat Show is one of the largest in the world. It's both impressive and a little overwhelming at the same time. With all the traffic and events going on, it made me look forward to going back to the boat a little bit more. It is day one of the Fort Lauderdale show. It's probably the only day I'm bringing my camera. I'm 
Waterdale show ended last night and it's time to prep for the boat. I just unpacked everything. I'm getting situated. There's lots of work to do, but it feels so good to be back. Thank you guys for hanging in there with me while I was at home. It was much needed family time and I really enjoyed it. And I'm very grateful that I went back. Um, sometime I won't get back. So thank you guys so much. I could not be doing this without you. Patrons, I definitely could not be doing this without you guys. You give me so much support and encouragement and y'all are amazing. So thank you. Um, but it is, I'm back. So um, time for all the boat work and see you guys next week. I don't know what projects are gonna be first. <laughs>